I'm Jessica Gondick, and you're watching For Art's Sake. Hello, my name is Jessica Gondick. Um, I'm very pleased to be at Parkland College and participating in this solo exhibition entitled Enterprising Machines. Um, I hail from actually Champaign-Urbana um, almost exactly 50 years ago. I made my uh, entry to the planet. Um, my dad studied at uh, the U of I. And um, so it's interesting how life can um, have you launch and be back. Um, I um, earned my MFA from Washington University in St. Louis and my Bachelor of Fine Arts from the Art Institute of Chicago. I currently am an associate professor at Loyola University Chicago. Um, I joined their faculty in 1996. I've been um, practicing as an artist uh, essentially since like the late 80s uh, to present. Um, this exhibition uh, at Parkland is entitled Enterprising Machines. Um, this is a series that's ongoing. Uh, the work that is included in the exhibition are uh, works on paper and works on canvas. The piece behind me, so a lot of them are entitled Enterprising Machines as part of the series. Um, this particular work is on paper and my process combines both hand and mechanical means. So generally, um, how these begin or have begun has been some research into early um, domestic objects from the 1900s. And in looking at these early kinds of domestic tools, I was looking at actual objects to kind of inspire the work. I was looking at early trade catalogs as well. And so there would be advertisements for the tools. And in particular, uh, there's a company that's called the Enterprise um, Machine Company. And they published a series of small brochures and catalogs entitled The Enterprising Housekeeper, which that kind of, that title kind of struck me and it had a very kind of interesting cover piece in terms of a, a domestic uh, image of a, a woman and you know the kind of being the you know again we're, we're talking a hundred or more years ago here kind of the the, the uh, ruler of the domestic domain if you will I've always been looking at mechanical objects or architectural objects and um, this particular series is driven by real functional forms. And so the Enterprising Housekeeper, I started taking that publication and scanning these little wood gravures and starting to kind of enlarge them on, in terms of you know, a very high resolution scan that would allow me to project them much larger than I was encountering them. Uh, Prior to this body of work, I've done a lot of work with 3D modeling, which is not really represented here all that much, except um, in a couple of these pieces, this sort of um, spiral kind of funnel type form where there's a really kind of distinct um, break in the line. It's, it's got like a you know, kind of a little cruder sort of rendition of a line um, happening that comes from a 3d modeling application as well so it's a little vestige of the 3d modeling i've done i mentioned that you know, we're familiar with 3d modeling from like pixar and all the kind of animated things that they do um, in terms of the film kind of realm um, the programs allow if you work with them i didn't work with them so much for animation but I worked with them to kind of make objects. I like the mystery and distance of the objects being that they're, again, a little bit removed from 
our current time and place, and then bringing them back into sort of a computer realm. I use the computer to compose and reinvent and sort of digest these forms. So the color, um, a lot of these have blue in them, not all of them, but the, the earlier ones represented in the exhibition rely on a lot of blue in them. And so you might be asking, well, why, why, why the palette that's being used here? Uh, again, thinking about mechanical forms and prototypes and architecture, um, I was distinctly thinking about blueprints. I, you know, again, I've been creating work for quite some time. I've actually done blueprints and cyanotypes. It was a, another way to mechanically generate imagery. So I'm always interested in a dynamic between the hand and the machine, that there's a mechanical aspect in the creation of the work, be it the subject is mechanical or a tool, or I'm using actually a mechanical contributor and doing a digital print, or and again, not a, a cyanotype would have been a fo an early photographic process, but a mechanical process. So all of these represent some binary kinds of things going on. There's the hand and the machine. There is sort of organic and mechanical. Um, I think it's fair to say there's sort of masculine and feminine dynamics in the pieces. Um, so cyanotype kind of blue references. You could say architecture. I suppose you could say blue is for boy, pink is for a girl. I, you know, you could make those associations. And they're not, my intention is they're not that clear cut. They become kind of interchangeable or intermeshed. Um, and, and I think that is a contemporary kind of dynamic about gender that, you know, roles have changed a lot from 1900 and people um, aren't so categorized by their gender anymore. Um, but it's interesting to kind of reflect on some of those older kinds of imagery and, you know, domestic things from that period. Um, so they start with a digital print. Um, I, I was talking about scanning those postage-sized images. So they generally start with a kind of printing these out. And I use traditional, traditional artist papers, uh, like Stonehenge and Somerset. These are papers that are used usually in traditional printmaking, like doing etchings or uh, lithographs um, and woodcuts. Those things are, are, are represent, the, that medium is also represented here. So they start with a, a digital substrate. And again, some of these are rings. This is another very subtle three-dimensional element that comes from 3D modeling. That's kind of a, a ring shape that plays off of the ring shape that I've, that again, I'm extracting from what this is, is essentially a, a meat grinder that's been, you know, taken apart. And there's sort of a sense of wanting to show this from multiple vantage points, so kind of interior, exterior, um, left, right, top, bottom, and, and in the spirit of animation and the 3D modeling that I've experienced, um, there's a, a sense that this is mobile or moving or there's something happening here. Um, the, the machine is not a static thing, it and it's not an, uh, it's not an inert thing. It starts to become um, its own being in some ways. So whereas we were just discussing um, the other three panel image in the exhibition, this is a, a sort of a sister image, if you will. Um, I guess the idea of a triptych is something I didn't touch on. Um, I like the idea of a triptych in a practical way. It allows me to explore some larger images. I'm somewhat um, somewhat connected to the size of the printer that I'm using to generate um, the underpinning for these drawings. So the triptych allows me to go larger, but there are also architectural and historical implications behind the triptych. Um, certainly 
uh, it's a religious format. We engage like triptychs in churches and, and architecture. So it has, it has that connotation, which I enjoy. Um, this also comes from the enterprising um, housekeeper publication. It features the image, this is a juicer, whereas the other one was a, like a more of a meat grinder kind of form. Um, once again, I, I'm kind of interested in some of the, the, the more minor characters, if you will, in, in these dynamics. Um, this uh, wing nut shape on this particular object, because I have this object in my collection, is a little different than the wing nuts we encounter on, you know, there's, there's certainly still wing nuts on machines, but it's, it's very rounded and it's, it's very kind of playful um, as a form. It reminds me a little bit of a Mickey Mouse hat. Um, so it has a little bit of like a childhood kind of connotation to it. Um, so I like the idea, again, of having this be mobile and kind of careen, if you will, or swarm, if you will, around the major players in the composition. And they're meant to be sort of playful or perhaps a little bit um, like an annoyance, like, a, like a, if you would encounter a swarm of bees or a hornet's nest, all of a sudden it might um, you know, go from something sort of a little playful to something a little bit more antagonistic in terms of um, the composition. And once again, um, I'm exploring the cyanotype. Um, some of the images also have some nice underpinnings in terms of like a nu numerical kind of notation, like this is number uh, 43 or 34, um, kind of giving it a little bit of a enumeration or kind of a sense of this is the patent. That's another thing I, along with these um, trade publications, is I'm interested in also looking at the old patent drawings for these objects where they, again, they've broken it apart. They've kind of showed, you know, the patent drawings kind of show the inner guts and the kind of the, the basic information about the form. So not only do the trade uh, catalogs kind of reference the object, but at times the patent and the particular um, series of the object. So some of those are those elements are kind of interesting, interesting markers in terms of the objects that I'm recording. So the first two triptychs that we've been talking about are a little earlier in the series and. This, this group on, on this wall, um, you notice more color, and that's actually something that's been a little bit of a challenge for me because the objects that I'm looking at are typically metal objects. They don't carry color. Um, having come out of that background with 3D modeling, um, another kind of attribute of, of that, along with being able to see different angles and turn things, is you can overlay a, a different color solution for an object. You can show an object as a wireframe or a smooth form. So you have the possibility to very quickly go through a lot of color kinds of things. I wasn't using a 3D modeling program, so it kind of put me back in a little different place with color. So I'm thinking about, like with this piece, which was um, reproduced on the, the card for the show, as the kind of the signature piece for the show, I'm thinking about bodily connotations relative to color. Um, the forms in here are not strictly from the enterprising housekeeper. I started to branch out to other forms and other sources as far as these catalogs and objects. Um, I've used uh, Pratt and Whitney's machine tools, early catalogs. Um, an interesting little connection with that is machine tools. One of the machine tools that Pratt & Whitney made were lathes. And the lathe is kind of an interesting connection back to 3D modeling because the object is made through turning the form. And in 3D modeling, you're turning the form. So again, even though I'm not 
directly using that, I still see connections back. Um, some of these parts then are uh, parts from the three, they're, they're small elements that come from the, the catalog. Um, the meat chopper blades are a vestige of the enterprising machines. Uh, the little spectator object here. So I've started to not just stick to one source. I started to bring different sources together. This vertical format to me is very much different than a horizontal format. A horizontal format alludes more to a landscape. Uh, a vertical format for me alludes a little bit more to a person or a character. Uh, so I see these very much as kind of being um, characters, if you will. These two pieces came up together. So the color, again, I was looking to move away from blue. Maybe I was getting sick of blue and just, you know, kind of sticking to that connotation. So I started to tiptoe gradually into a little bit more color. Um, in working with computer programs, I work with Photoshop, which is, you know, a very intuitive program that most people and students and teachers are familiar with. So I use the concept of layering quite a bit. Um, so I'll, again, I think of that first layer with the inkjet printing and scanning and, and also in making images you, with Photoshop, you can kind of take something away and bring it back and see different layers. So these are a little bit opposites. These two pieces kind of come, came up at the same time and they also suggest opposites. So the characters are kind of in a upright position here and they're in a downward position here. So they're doing the opposite thing. Um, this diagram behind here actually is part of like a cotton gin object and I I was associating it, it was probably used to kind of comb or do something with cotton. I don't know exactly how it functioned, but for me it said like grater. You know, I was looking at it and I, I thought, that looks a little bit like a grater to me. Again, I was thinking about domestic objects, kitchen tools, so I, I was bringing a different association to it. So I started to think about something coming out of the grater that was maybe not so pleasant and the connotation of the red makes it like thorn, it feels like thorns or something more bodily coming out of the grater. So that's kind of where that's coming from. So these are <coughs> opposite in that this overall sort of diagram, it feels a little bit like a ship, it feels a little bit like a grenade, you know, it has like I said, I'm not interested in always representing what, what it was, but what it starts to suggest to me. Um, in this case, this is like a positive um, object where it's lighter behind the form, and here it's been reversed with Photoshop. You can invert the object, and, and it's a, a darker looming kind of silhouette or form behind there. So again, in, in kind of developing these, I think of these a little bit serially in terms of one or two or multiple things I'm working on at the same time. And sometimes I'm trying to, within two or three drawings, create a relationship that they kind of dialogue with each other. I mean, I think as you look at the work, it certainly can stand by itself as an individual piece, but they start to also kind of talk to each other. So in the exhibition there are drawings that we've been talking about and there are also paintings and woodcuts. This is one of the examples of uh, one of the paintings on display. Um, this comes again from the enterprising housekeeper and you get a little sense a lot of times on the objects themselves, the, the name of the company, is part of the design. And so the enterprising machine company would be happening like along the handle of the object. Um, this particular object uh, is based on a cherry pitter. And so a cherry pitter is like, whoa, you know, <laughs> it 
again, an object that I have no, no familiarity with. Um, and to me, it, it started to feel a little more like potentially some sort of spacecraft or kind of dirigible, something sort of whirling through space. So I, I t kind of took the object front on and played off the symmetry of it. It had, you know, two sides to it that kind of open up to probably clean it, to put the blade in it sort of thing. And my whole layout of the composition, it's, it's a, an entire composition certainly, but it's, there are three distinct panels in here as well. So the center of this is all hand done. You know, again, back to this idea of hand versus any kind of digital output or machine. And, you know, one of the challenges for me has been not only color, and certainly in the painting realm, I'm engaging more color in the pieces. Um, another challenge has been for me to kind of weave, if you will, the hand in the machine. My very, my earlier stuff that's not represented here, um, I would have a digital aspect here, and the hand aspect would exist here, and, and they would not like cross that boundary. They would be kept very separate. So. Uh, Part of what I'm exploring in the drawings, which become very compound in nature because they're they're layered, and you know I'm building kind of in sort of a mode that we think about from Photoshop, that one layer and then a drawn layer, and, and kind of stacking on this. Here, I'm letting things kind of flow, if you will, across that dividing line, and interact with. Um, the digital aspect and talking about cyanotypes, this also is meant to kind of ape, if you will, an earlier photographic technique, which was a Van Dyke print or a brown print um, that was um, kind of contemporaneous with cyanotype. And so it's meant to kind of look like an old uh, brown type photo. And again, I'm exploring the idea of reversals, like the letters being light here and then reversing to being dark. Um, with the hand painting, I'm also using things like markers. I'm using, um, well, they're called Montana paint markers, basically. And so I'm looking for ways to, on top of the paint, um, kind, of, kind of relate that to some of the mark making that I'm encountering with the scanned wood engraving. So kind of weaving like weaving the language of what is, you know, in some ways I'm appropriating, I'm bringing things in, I'm finding things and trying to mediate that with my own marks in there. So it becomes a little less clear cut. Sometimes I, you know, people don't necessarily realize that something's hand painted or it's printed or it's kind of sets up some ambiguities in that. And so I'm, in, I'm much more in these works, I'm much more freewheeling in sort of intermeshing or interacting um, these kind of way, these kind of approaches between hand and mechanical. So we had touched on the idea of, of woodcuts. And if we think about woodcut versus like what we're doing today in terms of digital printing. I'm going to print something on my inkjet printer. Printmaking's always been kind of on the leading edge of, well, one, getting, getting materials out to people, being able to disseminate a book or disseminate um, materials, i.e. those catalogs that I was looking at. Um, so there's a kind of a sense of printmaking being a little more mechanical in its orientation, but a little more egalitarian too in terms of an art form that it, it can reach more people and it's not on that pedestal that sometimes painting and sculpture are placed, if you will. So there, there's an appeal that because, you know, printmaking is a mechanical form. Woodcut is the oldest form if you think about uh, gravures, Japanese prints, I mean, that's a form that's been out there a long, long time. Durer, those prints are five, six 
hundred years old. Um, so these are reduction woodcuts and digital prints. Uh, reduction woodcut is a little different type of woodcut. What happens with a reduction woodcut is you start up, well, I'll back up. These still start with a digital substrate like my drawings. So this blue image, I was, again, using a lot of blue, um, would be the first layer. And then I would run the print through uh, press uh, to generate a hand press to generate the woodcut. A reduction woodcut, you basically start with a blank block, you draw an image, hand draw, and you carve away and print, and then you carve and print, carve and print, carve and print. And if you go to the extreme, you can carve everything away. Um, there's no going backwards with a reduction woodcut. Some woodcuts are done in a way where I have a block for my yellow and a block for my red and a block for my blue and my black, and I can print those as many times as I want and the blocks are there to utilize. There's a degree of destruction that goes on with a reduction woodcut. It's a process of carving away and losing, gradually losing more and more information. So the last color, not always, but the last color is typically black for me. Um, and there's multiple layers. My interest in woodcut came from some of the artist residencies I've done over time. I was a artist in residence at the Mazaril Center on several occasions. And Franz Mazaril uh, was a Belgian woodcut artist who did stories without words. And so they were graphic novels, if you will. And they have a center that collects his work, has it on display, and a kind of a whole range of presses from very old ones that are quite ornate that would kind of be in the family of the objects that I'm gra gravitating to, the press itself. Um, but again, it's a, another example of my process being both hand and mechanical, new and old, taking digital printing, which is the, the most current form of printmaking, and combining it with the oldest. And really, the, a very direct, you know, what I like about woodcut is it's very direct. You carve a mark, it, it's there. Um, there. It's not like, I've d done a fair amount of printmaking in my in my education, it's not like a, for those, I don't know if they do lithography here, but I remember from my undergraduate, I would work on a drawing on a, on a lithographic plate, and I'd be very pleased with the drawing, and then you have to process that with different chemicals, and you basically lose the drawing, and then you've got to bring it back and roll it, and I, you know, there's like a whole lot of, technical stuff that goes on to make that print, a woodcut is very manual and, and also very, you know, three-dimensional in some ways that you're relating to the piece of wood and the sort of the relief aspect. And it's another connection for me back to those catalog publications where you have, again, those postage stamp little gravures um, that they're typesetting and placing in there and printing maybe, I don't know how many of those catalogs they printed, but they certainly were not printing the volume that we can print now that there's a manual aspect. So in some ways, those little gravures connect to that wood block process in a nice way.